Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Leadership Academy, our monthly meeting to pull apart and dig into leadership and ways that we can all excel as leaders and develop our leadership style. Um, and also, I think an opportunity for you to reach out to me and, and talk to me if you're looking to grow in your leadership and if you're looking for opportunities within the company, um, whether it be locally here with our offices or on a national level at KW or whatever, I'm always excited to have conversations with those of you who are looking to grow uh, and to develop yourselves as leaders. And, you know, we've spent the last few months talking about different topics that um, are a part of leadership and how to grow as leaders. And if any of you would like to go back and see it, you can find it on, um, on my YouTube channel and I think through OP Updates, the Facebook page um, as well. And um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about authenticity as a leader and how crucial that really is to your effectiveness and success as a leader. Uh, and, you know, really, I think help us all look at and understand what does it mean when we say we're, we're an authentic leader or practicing authentic leadership, uh, as well as some ways that you can actually develop it. And, you know, we've said this before, leadership is not about a status or a title. It's really about how you show up in the world. And it starts with how you lead yourself. And you've also uh, heard me say that, and, and John Maxwell has taught us this, that leadership is basically influence, right? And so in our conversations, I know we've talked about, you know, what are some of the characteristics of a successful leader? And we've heard a lot of things around influence and assertiveness and inspiring and confident and knowledgeable. And what about authentic? So let's put the spotlight on that and let's talk a little bit about what it means to be an authentic leader and, and what does it feel like to be led by an authentic leader too? You know, this is certainly not a new concept. Um, actually, the roots of this can go back to ancient Greek philosophy. Um, and it was, it was really there that the um, philosophers talked about and taught how authenticity is really the vehicle to self-awareness, right? And it's the vehicle to connecting to your true self, right? And so it's about being then able to use that to control your destiny and to be able to build that life by design. So we believe that the authentic leader is probably um, the most effective and charismatic of those leaders, because at the end of the day, and it's really true now, right? People are craving authenticity in all of their relationships and all of their interactions. Um, there's nothing more stressful or challenging than trying to work with or communicate with someone that you feel is not being their true self or not being honest or not being authentic. And so when we talk about authentic leadership, it's really about being your genuine self. And in order for you to be your true genuine self, you have to be comfortable with who that is and you have to be willing to be transparent and, and you have to be self-aware. Um, because sometimes we find that there are people who believe that they well, I'll just say that they show up one way and, and it's where they, and they think they show up one way, but they show up in some other way. So they're a little bit out of alignment. So it's really about being clear and self-aware as to who you are so that you can step into your own um, authenticity and, and be genuine and be transparent all at the same time. So I just want to pause there for a second. I love when we can be interactive. What thoughts are coming to mind or, or questions or ahas or, or anything or what you might be excited to learn as we pull this topic apart? Would you rather be led by a leader who is always right or a leader who is always real? A leader who is always real. <clears throat> Why is that important to you? Hey, Tim. Uh, hi, uh, because I've, I've been led by both and life is a lot easier when, when they're real. I think. Yeah. And what do you gain? And anyone can jump in along with Tim too. What do you gain from being uh, able to see that leader 
really show up with true transparency. So in other words, and we'll unpack this more in a few minutes, that the leader is okay showing you that they're not perfect, right? Yes, 100%. Yeah, so what, what do you have to gain from that? I don't, for me, it always like made me wanna fight a little harder for them. That's, that's just, I don't know why. I mean, I, I've had, I think back to one, one person <laughs> that, that came in and just, they had just got the title and they like, that's how they, they led with the title. And that was, it was a complete train wreck, but um, we had people that were leaders within the hierarchy and they were still real. So you kind of almost like went to battle for them as opposed to going to battle for the, the person that was actually in charge, so. So interesting, thank you, Tim. Interesting that you just said that um, because I think I have my notes here. I think it was Inc. Magazine or Success, Mag Success Magazine um, did a um, study and a poll and they determined that a leader's ability to be authentic was the single strongest indicator or predictor of an employee's job satisfaction and retention. So in other words, in an organization, the more the leaders were able to show up authentic, authentic, authentically, sorry, uh, that really had such a major impact on the people they led and it, it created higher job satisfaction and higher performance and retention because those individuals, similar to what you just said, probably felt like they were connected and wanted to you know, rally or get behind the, the mission and the vision in a stronger way. Does anybody else wanna weigh in on this before I go any further? Yeah, I, th I think it brings trust. I think that when you work for somebody that's authentic, that you believe in because you know they're being honest and you, you can trust them, which brings more open conversations. The more open conversations you can have, the more accountability you can have. And just, I think the more that the relationship can breed growth. Yes. So as you are participating in this call uh, today, take some notes and, and jot down the things that resonate with you and make some time to revisit it so that what my goal is, my intention for this every month is to give you some things to work on so that you can develop, so that you can grow your leadership, so that you can become more aware of, of your leadership style and raise the capacity you have for leadership, which I know, I, I know for certain will open up opportunity for you in many ways. Um, and so this whole conversation around authenticity and leadership um, is to remind us all that leaders are not, it's, it, leaders don't have to be perfect, but they do need to be authentic, right? And when, when we show up in that way, we're just reminding ourselves as well as everyone else that it's good to be human, right? And that while leaders have high integrity and want to see performance at a high level for themselves and those that they lead, they're results oriented. Um, and those are, are the intentions that we set out with. It is also about knowing that if we make a mistake or if things are not going the way we thought they would, uh, that we are vulnerable enough and comfortable enough and authentic enough that we can show that and maybe even ask for help or you know, then, then shift gears into let's create solutions again. So what, what comes into play when, when really developing your ability as an authentic leader? I touched on this a minute ago, and if you wanna write some of this down, the first, I think, component of being an authentic leader is self-awareness, right? So as a leader, you really have to have a strong sense of self. And we've talked about this before. I think maybe just last month, we talked about assessments, right? Understanding your strengths and your weaknesses, knowing what your values are, knowing different things that make up your character. Um, this is the gateway for all things that will help you grow personally and professionally. Because the person who does not have that self-awareness 
is not able to work in the strength zone, leverage weaknesses. They're not able to be honest with themselves about where their gifts are, where their greatest possibilities can, can come from. Uh, they're probably wasting a lot of time trying to do things that just are not in their wheelhouse. They may um, not have a high level of emotional intelligence or show up in a way that you know, makes conversations and, and planning effective. So self-awareness is huge, not just for this conversation, but really for, for your growth overall. So what are you doing on a regular basis? Here's my rhetorical question for you. What are you doing on a regular basis to become more and more self-aware? What are you doing to identify and use your strengths, right? How are you identifying and leveraging your weaknesses? How are you equipping yourself, right? Because part of being a great leader is that you help equip others and therefore you must be able to equip yourself. What, what do I mean by equip? It means, you know, are there skills that you need to develop? Are there new things, new skills that you need to bring into your uh, capabilities? You know, how are you growing and taking in new knowledge, right? So that you can continue to use those tools in, in your, um, in your business, in your path as a leader, right? So self-awareness is really, really critical for you to grow as a leader, because if you can't be aware of self and learn to develop yourself, how will you do that for others? right? And how will you recognize in others things that you can help them strengthen and overcome as well if you don't start with yourself? So you have to be your first project, right? So there's lots of ways that you can um, become more aware. Like I said, the assessments are one. Asking for feedback is another. I know that, um, you know, that can be sort of a mixed bag. You have to be clear about who you're asking and what you're asking of them because, uh, you want to get good constructive feedback, not just a lot of, you know, thoughts and opinions of who you should be or how you should be. Um, so just be aware of, of who you're asking and what questions you're asking of them. But the feedback you get from your environment can be very important, can be really, uh, especially for those people who may believe that they show up one way and they then uh, show up in another way, the audio and video don't match, right? The feedback can be helpful there. Um, another way to, to just be more self-aware is, in this sounds so simple, yet I wonder how many people really do it, is to take the time to think, take the time to reflect, take the time to ask yourself some questions about how are you showing up and to understand your behavior. So that, that period of self-reflection can reveal a lot too. Um, and then, you know, just raising awareness in general to what you're thinking and how you're feeling is a way to develop more of yourself, right? So again, self-awareness, really important, very vital to um, being an effective and I think appropriate leader. Um, and also you're, developing your self-awareness, as I said, will help you develop other people because it will help you grow emotionally. It will help you be more empathetic. Um, it'll help you give good feedback as well. Um, and so this is huge. So the first one is, is uh, self-awareness. So the second uh, component of an authentic leader is being transparent. And being transparent, especially when it comes to situations and people, right? So it's relational transparency, relational transparency. So in other words, not being someone who's passive aggressive, not being someone who um, isn't clear and concise in their communication. Um, and that's really huge, I think, as a leader, right? Because as an effective leader and as someone who is being an authentic leader, it's not about mincing words and it's about being clear and, and not playing on nuances and subtle messages. In other words, you don't want to have to, you don't want to be the leader that people have to sit back and say, okay, what is she really saying? You know, you don't, you don't want people who, who are, are around you or those that you lead have to feel like they have to figure it out 
or you know that they have to read between the lines, right? You wanna be someone who can be clear and straightforward and honest. Clear, straightforward, honest, genuine, right? In other words, people who are around you know where they stand because they know that if something's not going well, they can count on you to tell, you're gonna tell them, right? You're, you're the type of leader who is comfortable giving feedback. You're being a transparent leader means that you're okay um, with giving that feedback as well as recognition. And so the people that you're leading come to trust and know that about you. Right. So transparency and honesty is encouraged across the relationships. That's what I mean by relational transparency. So in other words, as the leader, you also want that from your people. Right. You want that. Um, so I trust that the people on our leadership team know that they can tell me what I need to hear as much as I hope they know I'm going to share with them you know, what they need to hear. And it's always for the greater good. It's always for us to grow as individuals and to grow as a team and to grow as a company, right? That's what this relational transparency is about, right? Because I think we can all agree, no one wants to be led by someone who's not willing to tell us what we need to know, right? So in other words, if we're all high level professionals and we're all working for, this high level of productivity to get results, then you want to know if there's information the leader can share with you that will help you do it better. Don't you want to know that? So that's what we mean by this trans, uh, this um, a relational transparency. And, and as leaders, I want the feedback too. I want to know from, from all of you, how can I grow as a leader? What can I do differently? What can we do better? The bravest question I think any leader can ask is what are we doing right and what can we do better, right? Because of course, everyone wants to know what we're doing well, but and when you can ask the question, you know, well, what can we do better? I think that shows um, authenticity and I think that that's courage, right? Because then we know if the feedback is not positive, we're willing to hear it, we're willing to accept it and then to figure out how to make it better, okay? So the third point I'll make is um, that an authentic leader understands how to, how to process, right? Just, just the whole concept of process. And they keep those things in perspective and they kind of balance it out. A leader knows that they need to make decisions and stay true to their decisions, even if there's opposition, right? That's an important characteristic as well. In other words, they're not trying to be the popular leader their, their, their focus is balance and they know that there's a process to things, right? So if there needs to be a change in the process or a change in how we're doing things, the leader is capable and willing and able to balance out what needs to be done and not worry so much about other people's opinions. So when they make major decisions, um, they, they may be looking for feedback. They may be looking for your opinion on things. They are still open to discussion, but that at the end of the day, they know if, if that's really what their responsibility is, is to make those decisions after getting all that information, they're going to just make the decision they feel is best for everyone involved. And, and usually using a, I would say some sort of a moral compass or really staying focused on the values, not of the, just of themselves, but of the organization, right? So that we're working within some type of structure. So if you're an authentic leader, I think it's important that you create an environment of that, right? And, and let's boil this right back down to some of you who might be agents and and working as solopreneurs, right? And you might be hearing this saying, well, I don't have a team of people that I lead. It's still the same concept about how you show up when you work with a, with a client, right? All the things that we're talking about uh, can be applied that way too. And so I think that an authentic leader wants to create an environment in which everyone feels safe and feels encouraged to speak and share their opinions and ask questions and give feedback. That, that whole, the ability to do that, that ties back to the whole self-awareness thing, right? Because you're, you're confident enough and you're self-aware enough 
about your thoughts and opinions and your values and your knowledge that you're not threatened by asking other people for feedback or information, right? It doesn't, it doesn't reflect on you at all. Uh, you're not worried that that means you're not smart enough or that you're not in control enough. You know, you're, you're confident enough that you, you have enough information, enough knowledge, skill set, you know, characteristics, strengths, but that um, all on your own, but that by asking for that feedback just, just brings more information, just brings more value, right? So that's all part of being an authentic leader. Uh, the fourth principle in, I think, being an authentic leader is they have a strong sense of moral perspective. They, I, I touched on this with the integrity that the authentic leader is really focused on doing the right thing. Now, doing the right thing doesn't mean that you make everyone happy. <laughs> you know, um, I learned that a long time ago in my leadership journey that um, I'm not going to probably make everyone happy every day, but I am going to be focused on doing the right thing every day. And I think an authentic leader knows enough about their company, whether it's their own company, whether it's the company that they're a part of. Uh, they know enough about the values, right? Like at Keller Williams, for instance, we have a, a mission, vision, values, right? So we understand that. We know the Y4C2 T's. And so as leaders in this company, we know what the right thing is because it's spelled out for us. And so for yourself, you know, what are your um what are your top values? There are assessments you can take to find that out. And I think that that's huge. And if anyone would like uh, some direction on that, reach out to me. Um, when I coach clients one-on-one, -on -one, that's one of the first things I ask them to do for me is a values exercise that helps them figure out what their top values are. Because your values, right, they, they're your belief system and your beliefs are the rules you live by and that shapes how you think and that shapes what you do. And so that's really important. And so as an authentic leader, you're looking at how to do the right thing based on your own values or the company's values. Uh, that's how you stay in integrity, right? And I think even standing alone as, a, as an effective high level leader or as a critical leader, it's important that you have a strong sense, sense of ethics and values and integrity, right? So that, you know, you come into it already with that, that foundation in place. Um, and so then, you know, certain things become deal breakers, right? Certain things that you might be asked to do, uh, certain things that, you know, might come up in, in brainstorming, you know, as the leader, you're again, confident enough to say, I really appreciate your suggestion and it's just not something we're going to do. And here's why, because as the leader, you're going to lead by example. And that's one of the, I think um, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time, right? Because with leadership, there are great opportunities afforded leaders. And then there are a lot of things that are asked of leaders. And so we also have to know, we have to be comfortable leading by example. And, um, you know, I think there are some people who want the, the perks of leadership and may not be willing to do what it takes to be a great leader. But again, you know, being an authentic leader means that you lead by example and that you demonstrate through your actions that you practice these values, right? That you have these behaviors that everyone expects from you because anyone can talk a good game. Am I right? It's our actions and our results that really show the alignment we have on that, right? And I think that, you know, you probably wanna ask yourself, is that the kind of leader you wanna be led by? Someone who is leading by example and demonstrating, you know, through their actions who they are, not just telling you who they are, but just showing up basically, right? So I'm gonna pause here again um, and see what are your thoughts on, on those few points that I just made? Um, any ahas and, uh, or questions on anything so far? I know sometimes I'm not sure if you just like me to teach and you listen or you wanna be a part of the conversation or not. What's the one thing that's resonated with you most so far? I'm gonna ask that. Uh, the moral compass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I mean, I think all of it is resonating. You know, you have to, I was just keep looking down at my notes, but yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, no, I think that having a strong moral compass certainly helps everything. So, yeah. And I think, I think again, here in this group, we have that. And yet it's about just, are we in alignment with it every day? Right. Do we stay connected to it every day? Anybody else have anything they want to share before I go on? Stay quick too. I always, it's always reinforcing for me to talk about keeping perspective, staying true to my decisions, regardless of other people's opinions and what they feel. And while we want other people's opinions, and it's always good to have those conversations, at the end of the day, sometimes that decision is just someone's decision. And you can't always let other people's feelings get in the way of doing the right thing. Right. I think, I think as leaders, we are to be respectful and aware of other people's feelings or thoughts, right? And we still have to be able to balance, that was what I, I meant by balancing out, um, making decisions or leading people where we need to be. You know, I, I, and Erin, you've worked with me a long time, so you probably heard me say this before. Um, for me as a leader, I'm not gonna apologize for the standards, right? And I'm not going to try to explain why we need them. Um, or, I mean, I will, I'll take the time to lead you and explain to you, but I'm not going to make exceptions for it just because I, I'm going to be afraid to hurt someone's feelings. So I, that's a good point. You know, and, and as much as a lot of this conversation makes sense, I recognize for some of us, it's not always easy, you know, and, and this is the work and, um, and you may not be hearing anything new Right, you may not it may not be teaching you something you don't know, or that it you know it makes a lot of sense as you hear it. Yet it's a it's the ability to keep unpacking it and developing it and using it, right? Because for some of us, authenticity is a challenge, um, and and this auth, this whole you know idea of being an authentic leader uh, could be difficult for some people to achieve because it has to start with your you being your true self. Right. And it has to, and that's the jumping off point. It has to be, you know, again, the true meaning of authenticity is that you are comfortable and courageous enough to express yourself as you truly are. And while there's always some adaption and while there's always some modeling and mirroring, you know, in our, our work relationships or in conversation, you know, it's not about transforming yourself. Uh, through each of those interactions to be someone you're not just for the sake of being well received by the other person, right? So the, the, again, the meaning of authenticity is, is about really expressing yourself as you truly are. And um, there's lots and lots of examples of how people lead, right? But there's not really another example of being your true authentic self. That's who you've got to figure that out. Right, so you have to search for what does that mean? Who who really am I? And I was just reading a book while I was on vacation, and uh, there was a whole chapter devoted to that. It's uh, the book is the Untethered Soul. So if you haven't read that, it's, I, it's a good one. Um, and it, the whole chapter was about who are you, and the author writes, you know, no, who really, who are you? Because we we sometimes when when asked that question. Uh, either directly or sort of indirectly, we start talking about our title or what we do. We talk about our identity, but really if everything was taken away from you, and this is a great exercise right now for you to think about. So everybody just think about this for a minute. If everything was stripped of you, your job, just work with me, where you live, who you share your home with, Forget about, you know, whether you're someone's spouse, partner, mother, sister, brother, just move that to the side right now. If all of that wasn't there, who are you? That's the question. That's when you start to figure out your authentic self, right? Who, who am I? Uh, how do I want the world to see me? To have you question, right? It's something you got to give a little time to. So again, ultimately, authenticity is a leadership skill. And if it's a skill, it means it can be developed, 
right? Any type of skill you can learn, you can develop it, you can sharpen it. Um, and if you don't develop it or sharpen it, what can happen over time? What happens to skills that we don't work on? You lose them. You can lose them, right? They can just, you can, you know, stay, if I use an analogy of a, of a scale, right? You stay here on the scale rather than getting to here, um, or sometimes just lose them altogether. So the, this whole conversation around authenticity is a skill that you can develop, right? And it starts with awareness, which means you have to be more conscious. You have to be more aware, more conscious of, of who you are and what your strengths are and your characteristics, right? So that if you hope to lead other people, it's gonna start with you first. So authentic leadership, I think is what the world needs today more than anything. Um, and it's interesting again, because we have a lot of examples, as I said, of, of, about leaders and we have a lot of, um, you know, examples of what leadership could be. You could read, you know, at nauseum about leadership style. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes back to who are you? And I think some of the greatest opportunity to develop that might be studying philosophy. I touched on that also in the beginning of the call uh, and really understanding, you know, how to shape our thinking because our thinking is also shaping our emotions. And so leaders are also in control of, I think authentic leaders and positive leaders are, you know, really in control of their emotions and they know how to keep it in between those lines, right? Um, I think also an authentic leader is mission driven and focused on results. We talked about that. And they're able to lead from both their head and their heart. That's the balancing that we were talking about earlier. Um, so what other questions do you have for me around your leadership? Or, you know, I would love to give you an opportunity, um, you know, to ask some questions of me or each other about how to develop your leadership or what other things that you might be working on. Why are you here? I know I just saw Katie put something in the chat. So uh, the importance of having clear direction and that moral compass to find, yes. Yes, the Y4C22, right? Like if, because we know that if we're not as a company working within the Y4C2Ts, we might be out of alignment with our own value system. So you have to have that clearly defined for yourself as well. So what, what are your ahas from this conversation so far? What are your takeaways or what questions do you have about your own leadership development? You can ask me anything at all and I'd be happy to chat with you about that. So quiet today, this group. I'm gonna pick on Rebecca. <laughs> I see you writing stuff down. So I just, just wanted like, you to know that I knew that was coming. Yeah, you could feel that, right? <laughs> I could feel it through the computer. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not, okay. So I definitely, I have a strong sense, sense of myself. I am a very dominant person and I know that. Um, I think my thing is learning and understanding how to process that. Um, Cause I can be very overpowering in my thoughts and I have to, process some of my stuff, but I, I, I'm very focused on always doing the right thing. I just don't always come across that way. <laughs> so I think for me being authentic, like I identify with everything you've said, right? I, I am, I stick to my morals. Like I have those set and I know, and I definitely follow the Y4C two T's. I actually, not that I, I don't mean actually, but I really believe in that. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a hard time projecting it. So I love your vulnerability and willingness to share that because I think that um, that shows that you're comfortable, right? Being transparent. Um, so do I have permission to coach you? Of course. So, so you're saying there's a gap between your intentions and how you show up. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. I would say yes. And I, and I don't know if it's, it's the gap. Sometimes I don't see the gap. 
you know, we all know that perception is reality. So my so, reality and your reality are two different things. Sure. So I need to merge them. So um, is it about delivering what the other person needs in a way they need it? Yes, most likely. And still being true to yourself and authentic. I think that's my biggest challenge is making sure that I stay in my moral compass, stay mm -hmm. in my set processes and know that it's, I'm being true to me and do it their way. No, well, I love that you brought this up. I think this is great. And I think there are other people who are going to get something out of this conversation. Um, I remember leadership is relational, right? At the end of the day, if you're not learning how to understand people and behavior profiles and connect with people, and, and if you're not taking into consideration what they need from you, right? It's all about people. If you're not, I mean... Right. If it's not about people, then you're not leading. Uh, you're all by yourself. So I think that's it. This is great because this is the one side of leadership that sometimes some people fall short of and they are working on develop. And I don't know if this is true for you or not, Rebecca. I'm just, you know, you know, talk out loud. I think that it it's the individual, the leader is spending a lot of time being aware and working on themselves, but then do you take enough time to say, okay, who is this person on the other side of the conversation? And what do they need, right? What, how do I need to be, uh, what kind of leader can I be for them, right? Because you, you can adapt and, and know what the other people need from you without having to morph into something you're not. Am I hitting the nail on the head? Am I on the right place? Yes. Would, would so what do you think, based on this conversation, you need to do differently to be a more um, authentic leader and, and sounds like connect on a deeper level? Well, let me ask you this. When it comes to self-awareness, mm -hmm. do you believe that being self-aware encompasses knowing that sometimes you cannot help certain people Well, and being or lead certain people? Like, how do you know that? Right. So, so I what I, if I, what if I change myself so many times into a, a delivery or whatever it is, right? So I'm trying to be self-aware that I know I come over crazy a little bit, right? So I need to be softer in some instances. This is like an example. Can you be self-aware that it's not helpful? Like you're just not going to be helpful for this person. Like with maps coaching. So say I'm in maps coaching and I just don't mesh with this one. No matter how many different ways I try mm -hmm. and I call and I change. Yeah. So I'll put a disclaimer on what I'm going to say first, uh, without knowing the exact context of right. what you're talking about, right? Not having I'm just the being general, detail, I'm not right? being general. I'll just say person. a couple of things. Um, we, in, in terms of being a leader, right, there's, there's being a leader, and, and then I know you're also working the capacity of a coach, right? So I'm just going to separate out a couple of mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. because what I think you might be referring to more is coaching, mm -hmm. now leadership, mm -hmm. okay. Well, no, listen. coaching, I know. There's some people I just cannot bend some enough people, to help. Like, look, I, I, believe, I believe <laughs> as a coach, and, and this is, you know, um, truly what I believe and abide by the International Coaches Federation Code of Ethics. I'm a member of the ICF, right? So what we believe as highly trained and certified coaches is that everyone is coachable and that everyone is whole, W-H-O-L-E. Like no one comes to me broken. They might come to me confused. They might come to be not clear because that's different than confused sometimes, right? They might need some clarity. They might need some goal setting. They might need some support. They might need encouragement. They might need strategy, training, right? So there's stuff people need, right? Which is why coaching is so helpful. A big part of it usually is the accountability piece, but I believe everybody's coachable and I believe everybody has the ability to move themselves from here to here and here to here, right? Everyone has the ability to grow and make progress. Now, that being said, the, I can't want it for you more than you want it for yourself, though. So, you, you know, the other person has to be willing to 
do the work to get there, right? So no matter what I believe, then you have to come in and do the work. So that's kind of in that coaching realm. Now, as a leader, I think as leaders, we have to take responsibility for understanding who is on our team and knowing not only about ourselves, right? And being aware of our strengths, our weaknesses, our communication style, right? That's all part of being self-aware, our skill set and knowing where we may need to develop it. We have to be, we have to do the same for the people around us. Now, what do you think you are required to do in order to get that knowledge? You have to connect, build a relationship and ask questions, right? In other words, sometimes I think look, I'm a very intuitive person. I really am. And my intuition rarely leads me in the wrong path. And I can read people really well, like really well. <laughs> but even if they don't tell me what I, what, what, what's going on, I kind of tend to know it. Right. But at the same time, I put it over here in a little box. And as a leader, I might use that as a foundation only to form better questions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the awareness part, right? So I'm so self-aware that I'm also becoming, an, and I'm not saying I'm a master, I'm becoming, I'm still developing as a, um, you know, an expert in behavior in general, that my intuition now will just guide my questions, right? But I'm never going to assume that I necessarily know what's happening with the other person. So I think it's about being connected, after, you know, after the self-awareness piece, it's developing that connection, building the relationship, asking good questions so that the person, because in the process of you asking good questions, you're helping them self-discover and you're helping them create self-awareness around their strengths, weaknesses, right? As you're learning more about them. Now, back to something else you said, Rebecca, about style, right? So that's, because I said earlier about staying true and being your authentic self, even though sometimes we mirror, we match, right? So there does, there does come a, a time where you may need to dial back some parts of the way you show up. And I'm not just saying you in general, I'm saying all of us, right? To make the connection- It would be really fair for you to say, baby. it's okay. <laughs> So in other words, like you said something about, I, I think you said something about intensity or, or I forget how you framed it. So if you know that for some behavior styles, right? And I think we can all grow from this concept. If we know from some, that some of our, um, that some of our behavior could be more than, so if our intensity is higher in some areas of our behavior style for some people, how can we mirror and match it, right? So even, you know, going on a listing appointment, right? Or a buyer consult, how can you make that other person feel like energetically you're coming in the same, from the same place? So did I answer that part of the question too? Because you had a lot going on. I know, yes. There. But like when I was, what I meant to get to was okay. like exactly what you just said. How do you mirror match and stay true to yourself in some instances like that, right? I, I personally struggle with dialing it down to a low, a low roar, right? So I will tell you <laughs> myself from experience, I've done this, right? I still work on it. And, um, you know, when I first came in as a team leader, um, Dulce's on this call. She was one of the people who said it to me. Uh, hi, Dulce. Uh, she said, listen, you know, hi, the Anna. Estate, hi, the real estate world may not be ready for you, Anna, because you come in with a lot of energy, right? I come in like an Oprah, right? Hey, whoa, you know, when I started doing team meetings, everybody had clappers and loud music and blah, blah, blah. And so at first I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I thought you hired me for some of those reasons, right? What I learned very quickly was, okay, I don't have to apologize for who I am. And I don't have to necessarily change who I am, but can I channel my energy in a way oh, he fixed that it. He other fix people it. around me feel like they can connect in my space? Does that make sense? They can connect in my energy. But I never changed really who I am. I never really apologized for who I am. Sorry, I got background noise here now. Um, but I was able to rein it in so that I could 
really connect with all the different behavior profiles. Because if I can't connect with you, I can't lead you. If I can't connect with you, I can't coach you. If you don't feel good in my space, we can't go too far, right? So you have to be willing. I think that's the self-awareness part, right? I became self-aware of the parts of my personality that were very high level that maybe I just had to bring down a little bit to make everyone else feel good in my space. Because once you feel good in my space, now we can connect and move on. Is that helpful? So I'm not selling myself out by doing that because I'm not gonna make myself feel like if there's anything wrong with it. I'm not gonna apologize for it. I'm not gonna try to become someone I'm not. I'm just gonna control how much of it I give you in any one, in any one experience. Helpful? Well, that's a whole other level of self-awareness. Yeah. Knowing who you are and knowing how you can take who you are and match it to the people that need what parts of you they need the most. Right. It's kind of like knowing the disc profile, right? Like other high eyes, they love it. Right? The, the S and C's, they might be a little like, whoa. <laughs> And again, we don't want to label everybody, but we just want to understand, you know, because, because it's about the initial connection. I'm sure someone other than Rebecca got something out of that conversation too. So you're not alone. Any other thoughts, questions, ahas, takeaways? Was this helpful? Good. Okay. It's always helpful. Good. So I want I want to, you know, again, encourage you to continue joining me each month and and encourage others to do the same. And you don't have to unless you have something top of mind, but um, you don't necessarily have to give me any thoughts right now. But I would love to know what other topics you would want me to cover each month in this leadership academy. If the purpose of this is to um, basically get some free coaching, right, on how to be a great leader or how to be a better leader um, and how to grow so that more opportunities come at you. Uh, what else would you like to talk about that, that would help you in your journey as a leader? And, um, you know, you can put it in the chat or you can send me an email, agibs2 at kw. Uh, let me know what other topics would be helpful to you and interesting to you. And um, we'll, we'll get those, you know, on the calendar as well how to best extract greatness out of others. Wow, I love that. How to multiply people's talents, right? Yeah, so there is a great book called Multipliers. Uh, and that that's actually, Tim, a good, maybe that is what we'll teach from next time. Um, and basically, Multipliers talks about both sides of the coin that sometimes we can inadvertently um, detract from people, but what we really want to do as leaders is multiply people, right? We want to add value. We want to pour into people, but we want to help develop others because that's the sign of a truly effective leader is that they can develop other leaders, right? And so how do we take that, that talent someone has and how do we, you know, pull it out and help them? I think one of the, the biggest things is having the time to work with someone consistently on it. You know, um, like for me right now, like I only have this time with you, let's say each month. So if I can help you do something more specific, just reach out to me and we can put a little time, you know, on the calendar together one-on-one -on -one because that's really, you know, it's investing your time in other people too, so that you can make a, a positive change. Any other thoughts on being an authentic leader? Okay, well, listen, I appreciate you being here. I trust you got some good stuff out of it. Um, feel free to put some comments on our um, Leadership Academy Facebook page. If you wanna keep the conversation going, you're welcome, Shia, glad you could be here. Um, this is being recorded, so we'll share the recording there too. And um, again, if you have thoughts and ideas for future topics, let me know and I'll continue to do this. And we'll be back next month. It's gonna be on, uh, we changed the date, right, Aaron? Did we? I'm not sure if we did, let's see.
We need to. Um, so that's going to be determined because we're going to be at quantum leap. Yeah. So it does need to be moved. Yep. Okay. So I'll let you know, we have to change the date for July, but we'll get that information out to you. So I look forward to the next time that we get together to talk about leadership. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Take care.